All right, so we're going to do something pretty challenging today. It's the last thing that we're going to talk about in uniform circular motion. We're going to talk about planetary motion, and more, more specifically, we're going to treat it like a circle. I know planets don't travel in perfect circles, but we can, we can assume they're very close to a circle. So unless they say it's traveling in an ellipse, then you can't use this tool. Let's say you had planet Laurentis, and you have the sun right here. And planet Laurentis is happy, right? It's got a mass. The sun has a mass. They both have masses. So they have gravitational pulls toward each other, right? We're gonna figure out how much work it would take to move planet Laurentis from some distance r away from the sun, so from the center of mass of the sun to the center of mass of planet Laurentis, out to some point at infinity. And something to consider here, planet Laurentis wants to hang out next to the sun. They both have masses, they both have gravitational pulls, so it's gonna take some work to wanna to move this planet Laurentis all the way out to infinity, and I put n beyond because, you know, it's Toy Story. So I'll say, and picture this, it has some potential energy because it's right next to the sun right there. It, it wants to stay there. But as you move it infinitely far away from the sun, planet Laurentis won't even really see the sun anymore. It won't really interact with it anymore because it's infinitely far away. So we're going to talk more about that. But the goal, we're going to figure out how much work it takes to move planet Laurentis away from the sun. And it, it's going to require work because it wants to stay there in orbit because it has mass, it has a gravitational pull. The sun has mass, has a gravitational pull. Planet Laurentis, I don't love how I put my VT, it's touching right there. That's a whiteout situation. Oh no, <laughs> I'm glad I'm a whiteout. But I'll say, velocity is not a force, it should not be an FBD, all right? So we have that, so the FG is pulling inward just like that. So, you wanna figure out how much work is done? Well, you know that if you take the integral of force with respect to position, that will give you work. So go back to the previous video. We did that with force with respect to position x, right? But now in uniform circular motion, we're not using x and y. We're using the radial coordinate system. So we're going to talk about the radial direction. So the only force Plant Laurentis feels to hold in orbit is the force due to gravity. And we know what the force due to gravity equation is for stuff that's in orbit, right? It's this equation right here. The force from the sun to Laurentis, the force of gravity from sun to Laurentis. So the question is, how much work would be required to move Laurentis from R all the way out to infinity? Because it's going to take some energy because it doesn't want to leave there. It's got the, it feels the gravitational pull of the sun, so you're going to have to have some outside energy to move this planet. Okay, maybe you hit the gym over the summertime, you're feeling strong, you want to move a planet. Okay, so we're going to calculate the work. Now you go back to the definition, you're like, this feels weird at first, figure out the work. Well, if you want to figure out the work, you have to integrate with force with respect to x. But we're not talking about x anymore for our position vector. We're talking about r because we're in a radial coordinate system. That's why I left it as an r right there. But it's the same concept. If you look back to the previous video, we integrated force with respect to x. We're just doing the same thing. We're integrating force, but with respect to r. All right? So we'll do that. And I'll cover this up right here. <laughs> so we're going to define the work to move it from r to some r at infinity. And my calculus teachers always said you couldn't plug infinity at the upper bound or on a bound of integral because you can't ever get there, so it's really the limit as r goes toward infinity. I don't know if that's a big thing anymore, but it was for my calculus teachers. So if you, on the AP test, you get a ridiculously tough question like this, you're like, hey, you know what? You gotta find work, we just integrate force with respect to position, that's all we're doing. And the only reason there are r's is because we're in radial coordinates right now. So the force acting between these two objects, is just the force of gravity. So you're gonna plug that in right there. And that's not anything special. That's just what we did in the previous video. It's just that our equation looks a little more fancy. The big picture is the same. We're integrating a force function with respect to position. And then g is a constant, universal gravitation constant. Mass of sun, mass of Laurentis, all constants. So it's nice to pull those out front. And don't plug in numbers. 6.67 to the negative 11 newton meter squared per kilogram squared. You can do that, but just call it big G. Big G looks a lot better than that that icky kind of number right there. So that's just the constant that comes out in front of the integral. And then you have a nice little integral right here. And don't let the math confuse you. It's not tough calculus compared to what you've probably been doing in calculus, but the big picture is, if you wanna find the work, you integrate a force function with respect to position from wherever you start to wherever you finish. And I'll give you how much work it takes to move that object over that displacement right there. So that's the big physics picture. Now we're just gonna do some math. When, I'm do, when I was doing math back in the day, I didn't, I didn't ever like calling one over r squared. I'd call it r to the negative two power. That's how I'd treat that. And remember, it's just the power rule. When you integrate something, you raise the power. So it's at negative two, I'm gonna raise it up to negative one, and then you divide by what you raise the power to. So I'm gonna raise it up to negative one, then divide by negative one. And when I do that, that'll be r to the negative one with a negative out front. So you have that, and I just rewrote it, negative one over r. So take a moment, make sure that makes sense, that calculus step. Let's say on the AP test, you're like, I'm having trouble with the calculus. You could say, I'm going to assume the integral is such and such. 
and then you can work it through and get your answer. Um, it's not, even though it's a physics test, it's not a calculus test, but you want to know how to integrate that. I write it as r to the negative 2, then I raise it to the negative 1 and divide it by negative 1, and I get that right there. Don't forget your constant out front. I'm going to evaluate this now from r to r as it approaches infinity. All right, so I get this right here, and I get negative, I just pulled the negative out front, negative g mass on mass Laurentis, and I put brackets right here, one over <laughs> infinity, and really it's the limit as r goes toward infinity. My calculus teachers really ingrained that in me. Minus one over r. And don't forget, if you're getting messed up, I just pulled the negative that was here out front, and you're like, oh, one over a really big number? Well, that's just essentially zero. Right, so that's gonna go bye-bye, and you're gonna be left with negative g mass on mass Laurentis times negative one over r, and that simplifies down nicely. That's how it is, and it simplifies down to right here. So if you wanna figure out how much work it takes to move the planet from a separation r, the big G mass of sun mass Laurentis over the r. And that r right there, that's whatever the, the starting separation is between the planet and the sun wherever you're starting from. Because you could picture it'd take a different amount of work if they started this far apart or this far apart. So if R got really big, like if these two things were separated from a far distance away from each other, that kind of makes sense that it wouldn't take as much work to put it out to infinity, right? Because they're, they're far apart. So there's not as much pull, all right? So write this down. It's big G mass on mass Laurentis over R. That's how much work it takes to move planet Laurentis from some distance R out to infinity. And the last little thing here, and I've done this in seven minutes, I've derived an equation. Um, go back, watch it again, make sure it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, message me. Keep in mind, how is work related to the change in potential energy? So that's our work function for a planet Laurentis R away from the sun. What would our potential energy function be, our change in potential energy function be? It would be, and on the AP test, they'll call it delta u, or they might even just call it u because they'll say, oh, at infinity, it has no potential energy. So you might see on the AP physics test that the delta u, and it's just the change of potential energy, is negative g. Remember, they're equal in number, but opposite in the sign. So the potential energy function, the delta u, the change of potential energy function, is the same as the work function. It's just going to have a minus sign out front. Okay, and... And these could be any two objects. It could be mass Laurentis, mass of Sun. It could be mass of your planet, mass of something else here. It's just the, the, whatever two masses you're talking about there. So on the AP test, the potential energy function U will be equal, see, GMS, GMS, ML over R. They'll be equal in magnitude but opposite in sign. They're, that's how potential energy functions, the change of potential energy function is related to the work function. And one little thing to note, um, sometimes they won't put delta U, a change of potential energy here because they say, hey, it had some potential energy here, but now when they're infinitely far away, have no potential energy, so they just call it U. They don't call it delta U. Don't let it bother you. Um, that was kind of funny. I had a lot of U's in that sentence, but the big thing is this. On your potential energy function for planetary stuff, potential energy used to just be MGH, right? Like, what's the potential energy of me holding this pen above the table? MGH. But remember, MG, you can't, that's... That's different now because you can't just treat things as mg because you're talking about planetary stuff and how far they were on a space level here. So this PE function is when you're talking about planetary stuff. We used to just say PE equals mgh. What's the height above Earth's surface? Well, it's a lot more complicated than that because it doesn't just matter the height above Earth's surface. It depends on like, hey, how far away are your two objects from each other to start? So it's very important you'd say, hey, how much potential energy does this object have relative to this one when they're separated by r? So. It's a little bit more complicated when you're talking about potential energy when you're talking about planetary stuff because it's not just MGH, okay? If you don't like this reasoning right here, like, you know what? I don't like what's going on there. Um, that's confusing. It's really important you have these takeaways. When you integrate a force function with respect to position, you get work. And if you can do all that calculus, great. You get the work function for planetary stuff. That works out perfectly, okay? And if you follow the logic that, oh, works equal but opposite in sign to potential energy or the change of potential energy, that's beautiful and that's awesome, but it's really important to note that if you integrate force with respect to the R there, that'll give you the work. It's just that our force function is the planetary stuff, okay? So I hope that helps. One little thing, they might ask you, hey, what's the energy of this planet? And so you're like, okay, how much total energy does this planet Laurentis have? It's the kinetic energy of the planet as it goes about the sun plus the potential energy. So it's Ke plus Pe. If you're confused on a really tough question, you're like, what's the total energy? It's kinetic plus potential. And maybe that, maybe 
maybe back in the day we did questions where you didn't have any potential, so the only energy was due to kinetic. Well, in terms of Laurentis, it's moving, so it has kinetic. It also has potential energy because we already just figured out the equation for potential energy for it, right? So in the terms of the total energy of the planet Laurentis, it's got one half mv squared, and it's the velocity of Laurentis as it goes about its orbit right there. Remember, it's got some kind of velocity tangent right there. Plus the potential energy term, and this is where it's a little weird. The potential energy term is actually negative g mass sun mass Laurentis over the separation between that planet and the sun. So just keep in mind, you're like, well, where's that negative coming from? You're getting a negative for potential energy because at infinity, if you move, once you move this planet to infinity, we're defining Laurentis here to the sun as zero. So if you're closer than that, it's negative potential energy relative to that point at infinity right there. We're saying it's got zero potential energy when they're infinitely far apart. If you don't like that reasoning that zero is here, just think about this. If you're really far from your friend, you'd be like, oh, I don't really notice them right now, even if they had like a whole bunch of clone on, right? You wouldn't notice them. It's the same with this planet. This is way far away, and even though it has mass as a gravitational pull, the sun has mass as a gravitational pull. If they're infinitely far away, they have zero potential energy right there. So that has to be where zero potential energy is, which makes this point right here. They have like negative potential energy relative to that point right there. All right, but the big thing is, if you're ever talking about total energy, it's just Ke plus Pe. This can't be MGH like it used to be because when you're talking about planetary stuff, MGH is an approximation when you're near Earth's surface, just like you used before, okay? So that's a little, I think I put Laurentis number 16 as my baseball number. Don't let that, I was just messing around, so don't worry about that. So I tell you what, that's a nice little reference to where we're going. We're gonna do a little practice question that'll make it make more sense. All right, thanks for watching.